And welcome again to the Burning World Ministry. My name is Sergio Garrido. And I'm so excited to continue again um, with this week devotional. We are in the seventh stanza of Psalm 119. And it's been already 18 or 19 weeks. And it's been uh, a blessing. I hope that this is a blessing for you. I hope that it's edifying for you to be listening every week to this um, devotional. And we are going, uh, as I said, on the seventh stanza of uh, Psalm 119. And what a beautiful psalm, right? Um, and we know that all psalms are beautiful. And we mentioned earlier that the book of Psalms was a long-term project. Uh, for you guys, if you like a project, um, uh, Let's see if I can, if you like this one, because in fact, this long-term project uh, took between 900 and 1,000 years to compose. At the same time, compilation also took a long time. This was an effort that spanned several centuries. The formation of this volume probably began in the early days of the, um, uh, Solomon's temple, the first temple, or even earlier, apparently it could have been even in, during the days of David. And later, after the return from the exile to Babylon, the compilation took its final form, probably in the third century before Christ. And that took almost 700 years. Hmm. So as I said, uh, we continue through this psalm. Last week, we um, shared about the beginning of this stanza, which it was um, verse 49 and 50. And this week, we're going to be looking at verse 51 to 53. So let's dive into it. Um, verse 51, it says, The arrogant utterly deride me, yet I do not turn aside from your law. I have remembered your ordinances from old, O Lord, and comfort myself. Burning indignation has seized me because of the wicked who forsake your law. In the same way as uh, the previous stanza, one of the, our previous stanza, I think it was um, stanza number five, um, which the title, the, the Hebrew letter was He. The psalmist is the victim again of ridicule and reproach from the proud because of his, uh, his passion and his commitment, his love to the word of God. Interestingly, we know that every situation in our lives is caused or allowed by God. It's either caused or it's allowed. And there are situations that God allows in our lives um, this kind of um, reproach or this kind of uh, ridicule um, and the intention is because he wants to fulfill his purpose in us. Strangely enough, right? Um, but he knows that sometimes opposition and adversity produce growth and maturity. When we face mockery, unjustified criticism, accusations, injustice, antagonism um, of the proud or, or the arrogant, we face it in prayer. That's, that's how the Lord wants us to face this situation, on our knees, uh, in seeking the Lord in His Word. This is how our light shines in the darkness of this world. Uh, sometimes in this type of situation, we might be tempted to respond uh, in the same way that we have been exposed to ridicule, right? Uh, we might be tempted to answer back angrily, right? But the Lord, uh, through his word, tell us, you know, about being angry, anger, put it to death. That's what uh, the uh, Apostle Paul says in the book of Colossians, right? Chapter 3, you know, put to death all anger, right? So we, we, what we need is really to bring all these things on our knees, bring it to pray, right? Because sometimes... You don't know what impact you could be causing in the person that is 
uh, doing this to you, right? And and the second part of this line, uh, the second part of this verse is, yet I do not turn aside from your law. This level of de- determination, I want to have that level of determination. And to, to some degree uh, of a challenge from the part of the psalmist, right? Could not, uh, this level of determination could not just be the result of a resolution as in the new year when, you know, Maybe you you are one of those persons that um, New um, New Year's Eve comes and said, "Ah, oh, I just want to stop doing this. I just want to lose weight." Uh, well, I don't think uh, this is a kind of determination that the psalmist had. Uh, but this kind of determination is base is 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 a foundation, foundational, true love and passion for the Word of God which is anchored in his faith and in his close and intimate relationship with the Lord. This persecution actually, you know what, deepens his determination to follow God's word and to live God's word. The same is true with us. Time like this will make you or break you. They will break your trust in God and his word or They will drive you deeper and deeper into your trust in his word. Mockery and persecution could be a blessing in disguise as they can lead you to a deeper commitment to the Lord's word. And that is the reason why he says, um, yet I do not turn aside from your law. We cannot afford to deviate, especially considering the times that we are living in. We need to really decide today and never forget that no matter what we are told or what is against us, we, our heart, my heart belongs to the Lord and even if I am the only one who defends the truth of God, I will not turn aside from the word of God. And in verse 52, it says, I have remembered your ordinances from old, O Lord, and comfort myself. Meditating, inclining our own heart, remembering God's word are all intentional actions of those who love the Lord. We choose to do so. Uh, this is not accident. To have that level of commitment is not an accident. Yeah. Uh, we choose. We, we, it's, a, it's a daily, um, it's, a, it's a daily intentional action. It is worth remembering that we cannot really remember something that we have not been intentional about keeping in our hearts. Believe me, dear brother or sister, reading the Bible is not enough. Normally, if we do not make an effort to keep His word in our hearts, it will enter through one e and exit through the other. And we know it's truth, right? Because we've all been there, right? And, and you know what happened the next day? Or two days later, we will not even remember what we read. Uh, in this case, we will not be able to remember what we have not been intentional on keeping in our hearts. And in the Lord, part of his plan part of his will is that we meditate and we keep his word in our hearts. Um, the book of Joshua, uh, and probably you you know this verse by heart. Um, chapter 1, verse 8, it says, This book of the law shall not depart, depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you might be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. So, meditate is good. Meditate in the Word of God. Right? Invite the Holy Spirit to meditate while you read the Bible. Right, And I wonder if your life... If what it says here in Joshua 1 8, 
when he says, for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have success. If this is not, this is like a, not the mark of your life nowadays. I want you to meditate why this is happening and read this verse again. You know, We need to have the word of God close to our hearts, close to our sight, right? In our heart, keep it in your heart. Some of, personally, some of my biggest failures um, occurred in the past because, you know, I didn't read the Bible. I didn't meditate in the Bible. But now that I meditate in the Bible, I really feel such a joy and I want to share this with you for the glory of God so you can learn to love and to have this beautiful devotion for the Word of God. What brings us comfort is that always in times of judgments, God delivers His children and that brings comfort to the believer. When we bring to mind His old judgments, we can have faith that He can do it again in our lives. The book of Judges, chapter 2, verse 18, it says, When the Lord raised up judges for them, the Lord was with the judge and delivered, delivered them from the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For the Lord has moved to pity by their groaning because of those who oppress and afflict them. Mm. This word ordinances also carries the idea of the verdict, verdict of all judgments contained in the word of God. At the end of the day, dear brothers, no matter how much opposition we might have, All that really matters is the verdict of God. It is what God might think about my ministry, my life, and your life. Likewise, when we stand before Him on the final day of judgment, it really doesn't matter what others have to say about me. It really won't matter the criticism, unjustified criticism. It really won't matter the mockery. All that matters in, is what God God has to say on that day and what we can and, and that we can hear him say well done good and faithful slave you were faithful with a few things I will put you in charge of many things enter into the joy of your master that was in Matthew chapter 25 verse 21 it's also a great comfort for you and me that there is a final day that will occur very soon. God will have that last word, and that is our comfort. We don't have to prove we are correct in every situation. We don't have to run to defend ourselves when, we, when they look down on us. What, that really, what does it matter? What matters is that great day and what the Lord has to say about us. Just remain faithful to Him. Serve Him with a humble spirit and you will receive God's reward in full measure. The last verse, verse 53, says, Burning indignation has seized me because of the wicked who forsake your law. The word of God is in, in the hearts of the saints produces a holy indignation in our soul and give us a zeal for the glory of God. The holy indignation is a fire in the soul of the psalmist, and the reason this occurs is because, of, uh, because his heart is so filled with the word of God, and now his heart has the heartbeat of God, and his mind has become the mind of God, and now he sees life and people, not in a lukewarm way, but feels what God feels, think what God thinks, act like God acts because of the ministry of the Word of God in his life. So he cannot be indifferent towards those who forsake his law. The book of Psalms, chapter 5, verse 5 and 6, says the following, The boastful 
shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all who do inequity. You destroy those who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the man of bloodshed and deceit. Mm. Please pay attention. Not only is the sin that he rejects, it is also the sinner that God rejects as well. And we are used to hear that God hates sin but loves the sinner. He, he tells us that God hates sin and that his holy indignation is kindled against the sinner who is under the wrath of God. It is in the midst of his burning anger towards the sinner that the love of God in Jesus is extended to us, to you and me. But the anger has by no means been dissipated. And one more verse in the same book, Psalm chapter 7, verse 11, it says, God is a righteous judge and a God who has indignation every day. This indignation carries the idea of outrageous anger. Hmm. It is funny that we always hear that the, the Lord God is love, right? But He, the Word of God, is telling us also that He has this outrageous anger. In even the next verse in Psalm chapter 7, verse 12, says that if a man does not repent, he will sharpen his sword. Brothers, friends, these are not isolated verses. If you want to read on your own, Psalm uh, chapter 11, verse 5, continue with the same idea so does God hate sinner? according to the scriptures yes only in the context of this anger can we appreciate the grace of God and the Lord Jesus in coming to die on the cross and shine in the heart of the believer we must take the entire counsel of God into consideration. And yes, we are to love our enemies, turn the other cheek, and share the gospel to them. But it should make us uneasy and we should feel a burden to see sin in the world. So this verse talks about the wicked, right? Like that's what it says. It's a burning indignation has seized me because of the wicked who forsake your law right so i had a look uh, to the word wicked and the, for those who probably don't understand the meaning of that word it means being guilty of sin hostile to god and he says that abandons his law um, and these are people who used to embrace the word of god and then for one reason or another decided not to follow him And we can see how the Lord view this kind of people that abandons his law. In, in, in the Lord's view them as wicked, right? Hostile to God. So this is time that if you are one of those that has uh, somehow um, abandons his law, abandons his way of living, abandons his faith, your faith, This is time for you, maybe it's an opportunity for you to repent, to come back to the Lord, to cry to the Lord for forgiveness. The Lord won't despise a, um, a humble heart, a heart that is um, um, crying for help and mercy, right? God is not indifferent to sin. God must react to sin, otherwise he is not a holy God. Holy God. Every sin will be judged by God. What indignation and anger God must have felt when his own son was on the cross carrying our sin with him. When our sins were transferred to his son Jesus and all the wrath of God was poured out in his own son. 
The good news is that there is no more anger for you. God's answer, anger, was actually satisfied and Jesus absorbed that anger for you and me. However, for those who choose not to believe in God and continue in their sin, there is a holy and perfect anger and indignation that will be unleashed in their souls. And that is exactly how God feels towards them because of their sin. But the Lord wants you to come back to Him, right? The Lord wants you to live in a progressive sanctification. The Lord wants you to repent. The Lord wants you to walk in this narrow path. We need to really decide today, today to be transformed by the Word of God. We cannot continue to be indifferent to sin, especially in our own lives. So confess that before the Lord and repent, as well as pray for those who are lost today. Be courageous and not hide the whole truth, the truth of God that is written in the Bible. So when are you coming back to the Lord? When are you repenting? Today is the day of salvation. May the Lord bless you and it will be until next week.